Thanks for logging on to House of Chappelle TV. I am Rico Chappelle, CEO of the legendary House of Chappelle. In the past 20 years, I've been traveling all over the world with my clients such as Tony Braxton, Candy Bird, Kelly Rowland, and a list of celebrities that I can't even count. And now I'm about to share the secret with you on a web series I call So Like a Pro. Each week I'll teach you a tutorial on a step-by-step -step rule of how I make anything from a fabulous evening gown to home decor and furnishings. All on a dime. This is So Like a Pro. Thanks for logging on to House of Chappelle TV. I am Rico Chappelle and you just tuned in to another episode of So Like a Pro. And today's guest is Egypt Sherrard. Sherrard or Sherrard? Sherrard. Sherrard. wants to add that extra R in there, it's not Sherrard. Well, you know, it's like, Sherrard. you would never guess. Mine is R-E-C-O, not R-I. So yeah, it's I have like, to see yours written. Yeah, like most people be like, Rico. I'm like, no. And if no. people mess up your last name, they call it Chapel. All the time. <laughs> well, you know, from back in the day, I used to answer to both, mm -hmm. Chapel and Chappelle. And so when I got to college, and my dad did too, so mm -hmm. when I got to college, they was like, what are you going to do? You're a, you're a grown man now. You have to decide and I was like, well, Chappelle sounds like it's money. So mm -hmm. I just started going by Chappelle. And most people know Egypt from the radio in New York and from HGTV. Um, we actually met, he came in my store and was just like, I, my homegirl told me about your store. She purchased a couple of items and she's been my client for the past four years. And, and you can claim relation to Dave Chappelle. Exactly, because we both skinny. Right, right. What are we doing today? So, okay, so I have a baby fever. Like, I have baby fever and... Um, my, like in my head, my baby dad is like Michael B. Jordan, and I'm so into the Wakanda fashions right now, you know. And so I was like, let's make a baby bib and like a baby diaper, and I'm going to be that dad that um, that me and my baby is going to dress alike. You know, I called her up and said, hey, I got this project that I'm working on. I think it's going to be a big hit. And she said, I got one little problem. So this had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that you know I'm pregnant. You are Freaking kidding me. Oh my God. I said, what girl? She said, I'm pregnant. And I was like, oh, so well, what's, what's, she was like, but nobody knows. So she wanted to do this big reveal on So Like a Pro. And I said, girl, that's what's up. Let's just do it. Baby. I've been hiding it pretty well. Four oh, so you and that fine ass husband still. <laughs> Yes. yes, I'll keep him. Oh, God, but, yes. <laughs> but you have a gorgeous family, so this will be child number three. Number three, because we have a 17-year-old he had before we got okay. married. We have a six-and-a-half-year-old, Kendall. Oh, wow. And then we got this one. And then shop is closed, honey. All right, it's closed. Shop is closed. Tell the doctor to tie my tubes while she's in there. I'm no. So what are you having? I don't know. I don't want to know. Oh my, so you're going to have one of them ghetto uh, Instagram uh, gender reveal parties. Why do they have to be ghetto? Because it'd be so ghetto. No, it's, it's just so. <laughs> okay, great, great, ghetto. great. But I don't even know. I, I don't even know if I want to do a gender reveal. Okay. I want to do it old school. You find out when the baby comes oh, out. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Well, See, I just think there's not enough mystery and wonder in life left anymore. It's Everybody not. Everybody wants everything right now. Yeah, we it's do. It's convenience and being instantaneous on Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Me, I just want to, I want to see what's in store. So if it's meant to be a girl, again, that'll be number three. Right, right. Then fine. If it's meant to be a boy. I'm rooting hopefully. for the boy because your husband needs a boy. <laughs> That's like, what he said. Yeah. He already got a onesie made up that said I look just like my daddy. And I was like. Yeah, I, I'm rooting, I'm rooting for a boy. Okay, so right. for this episode, what we're going to need, we got some, some lime green cotton. Okay. Um, and we have, you know, I call this the, um, Wakanda fashion fabric. I like it. I can make a top out of this. Yeah, Wait, you can make you a sure top. You want to make a uh, bib? See, oh, so we're thinking about your baby boy. Oh, your baby man. boy. Um, and we got a about a yard of elastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is pretty fabric. Some Velcro. Okay, elastic Velcro. Mm -hmm, a measuring tape, a little Sharpie to just to mark out some areas. We got some scissors. We got paper scissors. We got pins. Okay, so we're going to lay out everything inside out. Okay, so we're gonna work on the back side. Mm -hmm. Since we don't have an, an extra measurements of, of ba a baby, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw out the front and back okay. and gonna go from there. So mm -hmm. what are you measuring first? I'm measuring like from the crotch up to like the stomach area, this imaginary 
situation since we don't actually have measurements of a kid right now. Okay. And this is the waistline, so we're gonna have the waist to be about 20 inches. This is the waist right here. <laughs> These are what would be considered the this hip the area. This yes, is the this waist. is the waistline. This is the hip. This is the hip, and this is the leg area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cut this out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're going to do, you're going to sew two sides together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to do the back side. And when you're doing back sides of any like underwear, pants, bikini trunks or anything like that, you want to go a little bit larger than the front pattern. Why? Because you have to attach it underneath? Well, your booty is a little bit bigger than the front. Okay. Well, the baby's isn't. Well, it depends. You gotta, diaper, yeah, diaper. right, right. Yeah, okay. you got to. And then if you got a little black kid, so just you know, a with, little a little, <laughs> you know, with a little early dunk in the trunk. So you're at HGTV and Flipping Virgins. Flipping and, Virgins. Yeah. I watch HGTV all day yeah. and all night. Yeah, I've been on HGTV now, let me see, eight years? It's been that long? It's been that long. It's eight seasons of Property Virgins and three seasons of Flipping Virgins. Oh, wow. So it's been a long time. And so... This right here, mm -hmm. we're gonna do a bib. It's gonna be a bigger than a regular baby bib. Okay. And it's gonna be almost like a... Um... Now here's the thing, you're doing it freehand because you're the pro. Yes. Mm -hmm. But somebody like me or someone watching who's never done this before, how it's gonna work. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know to do this. So pretty much when you're making things, everything is really custom. You know, so since you asked, I'm gonna go. Now I see exactly what you did. This, right. is, the, this is the neck part? Right, that is the neck part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna put Velcro here? Yep, we're gonna put, Vel that's where we're gonna put the Velcro at, here. Okay. And it's pretty much here. Mm -hmm. Boom. And that'll be your bib. Okay. And like, as an, as an entrepreneur, like this is what you do, you do the trial and error, because you start off with no pattern at first, okay. you know. So when you first started sewing, you mm -hmm. did everything freehand, just? What I quickly realized that patterns for um, African Americans wasn't cool for, you know, the boobs and, you know, even me being a slim guy, I got a little booty. And so I would have to get sizes two sizes up, things two sizes up. Just to fit the button. Yeah, just to, waist right, waist. exactly. So, you know, it was really weird. And so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna have you cut out the lining. Okay. Well, just because, I'm, I'm going to tell you, babies go through eight to ten diapers a day. Really? So, yes, this is very real. All they do is eat and poop. Wow. So, so when you say, oh, I'm just going to wash them, you're going to be running that washing machine. Unless oh. you make a whole stack of these, I'm mm -hmm. talking about a good 30, 40 of them. Right. You're going to be washing diapers every single day. So we're going to put these on the fold. Mm -hmm. Why on the fold? Because they're cut on the fold okay. already. So we're going to put them on the fold. That's easier. And don't kill me, those are left-handed scissors. I just thought about it. You were cutting from the other mm -hmm. side. They're left-handed scissors. My best. Okay. Oh, okay. So my mom is left-handed. Really? But she's the only person in my family that's left-handed. Everybody else is right It's like me, my brother, and my sister. Are all left-handed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So you make this look way too easy. I know, right? I'm supposed to be learning. But so you're well, doing all the work. Because... I know, but you know what? We're gonna be sewing though. You know, I'm, okay. I'm gonna put you to the. Hey, you ever uh, worked a sewing machine before? I have. You know, when okay. I was in um, middle school, do you remember those old denim skirts people used to wear, where you would cut your old jeans and uh -huh. sew the yes. together? Yes. Yes. So you would split the jean in the middle. Yes. And then you would sew the patches in the center to make a skirt. Right. So I actually made money in school doing. Oh, that. so you always been a hustler. Oh. Oh, okay, I like that. Multiple jobs, multiple streams of income. Yes, so where are you originally from? Philadelphia. Okay, Philly, Philly girl. girl. Philly. I was in radio for 20 years. Okay, oh. While I was also building my real estate business. Wow. But uh, I was known in New York primarily as the radio personality, and then I moved to Atlanta because I was ready for a new chapter, and okay. I was ready to set up retirement from radio and get into real estate and doing television full time. Okay, we're going to line these up. Okay. Now, is this the, how do I know if this is the back side or the front side? Um, this is a, yeah, right, that's the back. Mm hmm. I'm gonna line these up. And so now. Okay, I have a, a really important question. Okay. This is the liner, mm -hmm. but we're putting it on the front side? We're putting it on the front side, and we're gonna flip it inside out like a pillowcase. After you sew it together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna take a couple of pins, about five this or six is, pins. The idea is just to hold it in yeah, place. Yeah, hold it in place. Okay. 
man, I saw a wedding dress you made that was out of this world. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm actually going more into bridal. There's a market for it. Yeah, a crazy market. Because the ready-to-wear market is too saturated. You know, you got Fashion Nova, and you got all these other companies, Zara, and they are killing the game, and I cannot keep up. I need, I need a baby shower wear. <laughs> okay, I got you. I what do you wear to a baby shower? Because they're putting my baby shower together now. It's not going to be for a few months. But I was thinking, you know, I want, I'm over the top. So I was like, what if I come in? You are not over the top. You always kept it simple. Oh, no. Oh, so you really off. over the top person now. So off camera. I keep it simple on okay, camera. Okay, okay, I got you. Because I, I got to be functional. Like, okay, I can't, right. I can't do construction in you know, a tool dress. Well, you're right. <laughs> that would be hot, though. But I do like to take it up a notch, especially when I'm doing an event. Okay. You know, something memorable. Okay. So, and for the baby shower, I want to do, I'm thinking, a winter wonderland theme. That's what I want to have my wedding, winter wonderland. In you know, winter, I'm planning right. all this with no husband, right? That's okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to wear to baby shower. I was like, what if I come in? Like in a modified wedding dress. Is that corny? <laughs> yeah, that's a little corny. It, well, that would be, well, especially, well, yeah, that's a little corny. Is like, it, so what do you wear to a baby shower like, well, most, well, most people like to show off their belly bump. My my last, right. my last mother-to-be, she um, wore just a purple long sleeve. Uh, the dress is like the E-class dress, but it was a gown. She wore it as a gown, oh, and cute. she showed the baby bump, and okay. it was absolutely amazing. She was having a little because girl. Because it was fitted. Right. Um, and then you have some, some people that like to wear, like, empire waist or just push the boobs up and just have a lot of chiffon and Floyd stuff. And they usually wear a hollow situation where it's shorter in the front, cover their knees, and then longer in the back. Well, we have three months to figure okay. out. Okay, okay, cool, cool, yeah, cool. I'm not going to have the shower until I'm about seven months. Oh, so, so we're wait, from... wait, wait. I just noticed you did something. Okay. Your liner for the diaper, you did separately. I did the, separate. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why I did it separate, because on these, once, once we put the, um, so this together, the, um, the panty, outside of the panty together, and the uh, inside of the panty, we're going to mirror the two inside out, and then we're going to sew the elastic and slip the elastic. On the inside of them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're using a size 14 needle. Um, and on cotton, you don't want to go over a 14 because you have 10, 12, 11, 14, and 16. 16 is like for denim. Uh, 14 is like cotton. And once it go, get below that, it goes like for silks and knits. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we thread the machine and we're going to sew on a number eight which is a straight stitch that's not too tight, but tight enough to hold the fabric. Okay, um, okay so we just leaving a, like a one four seam allowance. Okay. And it, you, it guides you right here. The skinny one. Mm -hmm. Yep, the little skinny okay. line. And you just put your foot down. And you pull the pins as you go. Um, well, actually, you really don't have to. If, so the pin won't fall? Mm -mm, you can just sew right over them. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, back when I told you I used to do the jean skirts, mm -hmm. I would pin them, but I had to pull the pin out. Maybe it was the type of sewing machine I had back then. And if you had really big pins. Yeah, because the pins would jam up the needle. Yeah, mm-hmm. And at that, meet it up at that line. Mm -hmm. Put the foot down. And just have that line guide to seam of the... And there you go. And that's that. Yep, that's okay, that. Okay, I can do this. Let's try it. <laughs> okay. And just okay. put the foot down. Match it up to that Long line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Wait, you put the foot down right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to put your foot down in life. Yes, put your foot down in life. Okay. So how is it working? Ooh! Yes, yes. Hold on. Hold now on. Hold lift on. the foot up. Now I'm excited. Lift the foot up. Mm -hmm. Bring it around. Cut the and thread. Cut. And now do the last side. Okay. Look at that crotch. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I haven't done this in so long. I put the foot down. Put the foot down. Yeah. When, once okay. you line it up. Put down. She's doing good. Okay. You're doing amazing. Yes, good job. So I'm going to sew the inner circle, and I'm going to have you sew the outer circle. Okay. Circle. Now, do we take the pins out? Um, yeah, you can go ahead and take the pins out. You know, I, could, I have an opening for as an, I need an assistant. You want to um, come join the House of Chappelle? Maybe when I retire. Okay. Is that okay? I am, you, you, hey, you, you don't got to tell me. But this is relaxing, though. Honestly, you know, this, this is a break from my norm. Yes. I think everybody should have 
a hobby. And no way would I be selling on your level, but maybe a pillowcase. Right. But you got to think like little stuff like it say it was in, in the long run it saved a lot of money. Well, here's what I say. My grandma, she was super talented. You know, back then you had to know how. To right, sell. right. You made everything. She made my first graduation dress. Oh, wow. She made drapes in almost every family member's house. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm talking about, you know, the tailored, tailored right. Top. It was amazing. And we all just let that go right over our head because we took it for granted. Right. You know? And so what I'm doing, I'm just going to, I'm sewing up the, um, the outer loop. Okay. And I left. I went on and closed the bib because this is what's going to go around the neck. Um, I'm leaving a hole at the bottom so we can flip it through. Okay. How big of a hole? Um, maybe about three inches. Okay. Actually start right here. And so here and a close. Then, mm -hmm. Okay. And still do it at the one quarter mark? Yes. Okay. Turn it. Let me find out. You finna go home and start your baby build no, build don't business. Get don't get <laughs> These I'm corners like, aren't easy. When you it's have not. To start turning. And what I do, I normally hold it like okay. this. That, that might be better. And you know that that left hand situation kinda. So I'm works. starting to think that yeah, being left handed and sewing is probably better. Right. Wait. Is this a left-handed sewing machine? No, it's no such thing oh, as a left-handed oh, okay. sewing machine. <laughs> Derek J asked me the same thing. This is not a left. I wish they had a left-handed sewing machine. You're doing really good, Am really I? good. You're good for my ego. <laughs> All right, so I stop right about about here. Okay, that's good, right that's there. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna take her out. Make sure you caught everything. You caught everything. Okay, so now help me take the pins. It's not too bad, actually. Yeah, it's not. It's not at all. It's really good. Notch the edges so we can have a good corner when we flip those inside mm -hmm. out. Well, right side out. Around the neck, I just like to clip so it make that curve a lot more smoother. And this is on the inside? Mm-hmm. Okay. Who was your first big client? I got my first clients, big client styling. Um, T.I., Young Bloods, when Young Bloods, Lil Scrappy, when Lil Scrappy just came out. Um, and then my first big, big client was actually Tony Braxton. Really? Tony Braxton. And you then. Did you do those dresses she wore to the award show? Um, not those. That was way before my time. I was doing okay. high school girl. Um, but pretty much a lot, about eight years ago, mm -hmm. It was, I was on a road with her, going to Russia, um, Hawaii, St. Lucia, St. Kicks, like all, all over the world. Like making she her took, making her, too. and I would have to take this sewing machine with me everywhere I went. Sometimes I would be traveling with like nine bags. I would have fabrics in one, sewing machines in one, gowns in another, shoes oh, wow. in another, wow. backup stuff in another. It was absolutely. I can imagine what that was like for you as security. Go back inside and like get these corners really good. And you're doing that with scissors? Mm-hmm. Yep, going with scissors. Okay. And so what we're going to do, do that. And then now we're going to move over to the iron, ironing board and press it on out. So but what about this part? We're going to, once we press it, we're going to close it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. You a mama, you should know how to iron. I can iron. Oh now. yeah, I was I saying, you a mama. Do okay, yeah, I was I saying, you a mama, and you gotta. And I starch everything. Oh, oh, don't, oh, don't tell me you put the, the starch in the crease in the jeans. I did, I put the starch everywhere. Oh, not in the crease. Okay, the I was gonna say, oh no. I put starch on everything. I, yeah, I'm guilty of it. Okay. But you know what? Ironing is like a stress reliever to me. Really? Yeah. It's, it's cathartic, because you, you can sit and think about what you're gonna do for the day, or if you're ironing at night, what you. Um, if you're ironing at night, what you got to do the next day, mm -hmm. you know? You are very articulate. Where where did all this come from? Well, my, my stepfather who raised me, okay. he didn't allow for slang in the house. Mm, he made sure that we pronounced every word as it was supposed to be pronounced. Uh, and back then it used to drive me crazy, but now I understand. And I think it helped me in radio and television, you know? But see, my dad was so straight slang on everything. My dad and my mom. So, okay, that's great. So on this little part right here, we just kind of flip it in. Mm -hmm. and, and just as long as it takes the mold, the shape of the bib, and then go over. 
and do a little pressing. Mm -hmm. Watch your fingers now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we press the seams on all three sides. Open. Open. Mm-hmm. And just imagine we're almost done. So how's it working with the girls over at Sister Circle? Uh, oh, yeah, I go over and fill in sometimes. Oh, okay. They're fun. Rashawn, Selena, Kiana, Quad, you know, sometimes everybody's got a life and they kind of have right. a secondary career. Mm -hmm. So when someone's out, they'll call me and say, hey, can you fill in? Oh, that's good. And when I'm available, I try to go over. Okay, good. I always have fun with them. Right. It looks like you have fun with them. I do. You know why? It's a break from my norm. Right. With my norm, I'm taking out walls. You know, I'm yelling at right. contractors. <laughs> I'm trying to get people to the closing table. Right. So. Well, that's what I'm working on now. That. Are you trying to buy a house? Yep. Yeah, I'm. Can you call me? Um. You know what? I'm what at the. Well, no, it ain't even what had happened All was. Right. What is what's going on is, I'm getting that good old credit straight. Oh, okay. That's um. Good. And um. That I'm pay paying a lot of stuff off. I paid a lot of stuff off within the past year um, because before I have my kids, I want to bring them home to a house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to turn it right side out, the lining, and we're going to mirror the two insides. Mirrored. Right, mirrored it is. Okay. Oh, elastic, right? Yes, it's time for the elastic. I have it right here. But before we put the elastic in, we're going to just stitch on the outside. I'll start you off. And just go around the edge so it can be sandwiched together and won't move. We're just gonna mirror, mirror and close the um, two together with a straight stitch machine. And then we're gonna take the elastic, elastic and go over it. This is all freehand. That is what's crazy to me. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so you now, do Rico, the leg. Rico, this yes. is all great and fun. Mm -hmm. I would have gone out and bought these. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's too much. And this is not too much. <laughs> this I would have called you and said, Yo, can you please make me five of those baby Wakanda diapers? Yes, Wakanda and diapers. Come to my house by next week. That's it. Now, that took me three minutes. But see, everything is so. I'm give you my credit card. It's so insta, like, but this has so much meaning it to is. it. Now, I will say that this, when you have that kind of time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or if this is what you want to do, it makes sense. Right, okay. right. Now, the trick is teaching you how to put this elastic on. This is going to be fun. No, the trick is me finishing this little leg right here. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but it's looking good, though. So, this is what I do okay. I'm going to start it for you and let you finish. No, 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 Rico. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Help me understand something. Why are we putting the elastic on the outside? So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you right now. So what I like to do, I try to make a garment as clean as it is on the outside, on the inside. Okay. So what we're going to do is put it on the outside. And this, then when by we- By the way, this is not a baby, that waist. Oh, I know, right. That's like a toddler. Right. Okay. Um, but you know, I did say in the beginning, since we don't have a normal baby size. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna flip it. And so it'll look clean oh, when we, good. yeah. Okay, you do this, I'll watch. <laughs> and so we're taking this bottom part off because you can slip the whole a little brief in the inside. And this could be like trunks for a baby or anything mm -hmm. like that, you know, going to the beach. And, and so doing the elastic, you want it to stretch. And so we're putting it on a zigzag stitch. And for zigzag, I recommend you using a four because it's loose enough and wide enough to grip the whole entire elastic because we're only using three quarter elastic, okay? And so when you're sewing, you wanna just slightly pull. You don't wanna pull so drastically that it just squeezes the baby waist. Mm -hmm. Now we clip. And so, ah. yeah, you know, on here. Okay, so we so. fold it back and go over it. Mm -hmm. We're folded back, like here, like on so. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're going to be sewing from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So, 
You want to try this? Yeah. So okay. This is, the, this is the zigzag. This is zigzag. And so when you're doing it, you're folding and you're also pulling mm -hmm. and sewing. And you're taking it where you're sewing. The elastic is going to be in the middle of the foot mm -hmm. where the stitch, you can see the stitch is on both the green fabric and the blue fabric. Okay. You see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh, you, oh, oh, you know what you're doing. No. <laughs> just follow directions. <laughs> follow directions well. It's just, a, it's like a lot of my friends, they're having babies. Um, Eva. Oh, yeah. Did uh, she have the baby yet? Um, yeah, she had a baby. She had a baby boy. Right. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Is she done or she wants more? Um, you know, Eva's young. She can pop out one or two more. How old is she? Um, Eva, I'm um, 41. Oh, what is so. her age? So, oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, so Eva should be... Did you just say 41 was young? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've been feeling some kind of way. Like, you know, 41. By the time I deliver the baby, I'll be 42. You know, that means by the time the baby's 20, I'll be 62. You know, all well, stuff. <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, so don't say that. Baby. Don't say that. Oh, my God. It builds up in my head, you know, and you, you just... It's not the same as I, when I had my first daughter. You but know? just imagine the struggle. Remember, I, well, my parents had me young. Okay. My mom had me at 19. So that's young. Yeah, and that's... That good snap back. Right, right. But just think, like, the stuff that we, like, didn't know if we are going to have school supplies or anything yeah. like that. Like, our kids are going to be safe and secure yes. and all that good stuff. Have, well, that's what every generation wants. You want your kids to have what you didn't have. You want right. them to provide. But sometimes I question myself with my youngest, like, does she have too much? Right, have right. Have done too much that for hustle. her that she doesn't yeah. like, that she doesn't know what it's like not to have? Right. My first business, I was seven years old. Um, when most of the guys was out playing in the, in the streets, I was on the porch selling lemonade and candy. Mm. Yeah. So you were always a hustler, too. Yeah, always. You gotta be, you know? In this world, yeah, every generation you get better and better. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. My nephews are spoiled rotten. I be looking at them like, are y'all really, do y'all really know what's going on right now in the world? So Rico, you put a time on your, on you having a baby? Um, actually, no, I didn't, but. But you, you've talked about it a lot, just today alone. Yeah, um, I said, so we're going to flip and, mm -hmm. Same. and while I'm flipping, you can go ahead and Velcro. So for a kid, you just need a little, you just need a little piece for a kid. And you can do a stitch here, here, and then on the inside, mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. All righty? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to clean this up. Um, I necessarily, well, now since I'm getting older, okay, it's a time limit now. Because I don't want to be. How old are you? I'm about 41. Oh, we're all the same age. Yeah, so I don't want to be like at the PTA meeting, <laughs> you know, too old. You know, I still want to have some fineness. I really want to have boys because I think boys get, especially nowadays, get kind of get the, the shitty end of the stick. Well, I will tell you, um, as much as my husband wants a boy, and, you know, we really don't have boys. My, like, my, my parents don't have any grandsons. Everybody has girls. Oh, right. So, you know, I want a boy, but... I'm afraid in America today. Yes. To have a little black boy, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I try to tell my nephews, I tell my sister all the time, if you don't, um, if you spare the rod, rod what, what's it say in the Bible? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Right, right. I know it well. Right, I'm like, if you don't do it, somebody else will. Yeah. So, and most people ask, I'm surprised you didn't ask, is about me having a partner. Um, I mean, ideal, I would love to have a partner, but you mean to raise your kids? Yeah. I thought about that, but I didn't want to pry too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be the first question, like, Dr. Jackie, because I talked to Dr. Dr. Jackie about yeah. having kids. She was like, what about your partner? I am definitely open to having a family without a, quote, unquote, original family structure, whether it's a mother and father or two fathers or whatever. Um, I wasn't raised like that. I stay with my aunt. And my two cousins, the, the, the living situation was too totally, was totally different because it was a young man living with two girls and a woman, a grown woman. And 
My aunt taught me how to love, how to cook, how to clean, most importantly, morals and values that I still live with to this day. And I think when you're raising kids, the most important thing I said about my aunt was love. She showed me unconditional love. And as long as you have love with them kids and make sure they're provided for it in the correct way, that's family to me personally. Um, even Dr. Are Simone. You with someone now? Um, no, um, it's really hard in this lifestyle because so many uh, black gay men are still in the closet to their families. And like my family loves me. My family, when on the first day I decided, hey, this is me, they was like, so we don't care. Now, did you know? they know before? Um, my mom said she suspected, and I dated girls. Did um, you? Until what age? <laughs> um, until I was about 24. Did you like girls genuinely? Yeah, I love, I love, I love girls now, but I just hated the nagging. Hey, so wait I hated a the I nagging and that. and asking the questions three times. So you're saying we turned you gay? Yeah, y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, no, no, you know, child. no, and um, well, it it became. I did a YouTube video about coming out, and I remember growing up, you know, living in the projects in Chattanooga and all the projects. You know, my grandparents lived in the suburbs, mm -hmm. so we wasn't allowed to pimp, and we wasn't allowed to sag, and we wasn't allowed to do a lot of things that my friends was doing, and so automatically I was pushed in being gay. You know, because you were a little more clean cut. Yeah, I was clean cut, and you know, I just was like. Well, am I? And I tried it and I liked it. Um, <laughs> so that's what really kind of happened. But how do you just try it? What do you mean when you say I try um, it? Because my thing is, like, for kids, they don't know unless they're exposed to it. And, um, and then plus, I was molested. Um, and that's one of the things that when I do have my kids, I ain't leaving my kids with nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, was it by a family member? Um, it was by a friend of the family and a family member. So during the conversation with me in Egypt, um, I brought up the fact that I wanted to keep my boys with me 24 hours a day simply because I was molested growing up. And we discussed it for a brief second and I moved on. And one of the reasons that I'm able to move on so quick, when you are faced with adversities in life, I think the real true test of a man is how well you handle the adversity. And I will not let something that happened to me 30 plus years ago stop me from being successful. Now, I will not place the blame on the person that put his hands on me or my mother or my father not being there or whoever not looking after this young four year old boy. I will not dare put that them in a situation or blame them. I just have to roll with the punches and just when it comes around full circle, when I have kids and when my kids have kids, to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Make sure that generational, whatever curse or thing that's passed down to most generations, that it stops, it stopped with me. No, the reason I ask is because you know, you hear people all the time say, well, I was born this way. And then you, you hear others say, you know, I liked women at one point. And so then you always wonder, I don't, what's I, that transition? Well, I think when you're molested, you don't have a fair shot. And so I can't really say, like, I, I know I love, I love, I mean, I still do love women, but, you know, it's just like. One of my other best friends, he's also gay, and mm -hmm. he tells me. Is he single, girl? <laughs> is he single? And he's fine. Oh, is he single, girl? And Give him my number. Fine. We're going today. And he wants to. He told I, me he always knew he did not like women. He said, you know, I took a girl to the prom. Is he an interior designer? His, very best friend, I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh -oh. His very best friend was his girlfriend at one point. And she's like, oh, honey, I always knew. <laughs> look, look we, we, that's a whole nother story. I gotta talk about that off camera. And, yeah, but guess what? His, his thing is. His thing We're is, done. No. Are we? We're done. This is so much fun. Okay. I didn't yeah. Done yet. Yeah, we're done. We're this done. Cute. Done. Can I tell you something though? Yeah. This waist is so wide. My six-year-old can wear it. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a taller pant. That's like yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. But if it was tiny, it. we can do a little taking up in a waist, and we can put a little belt on a baby. I love it. Fashionable belt. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you guys for logging on to Hospital mm -hmm. Bell TV. You just witnessed another episode of So Like a Pro with Rico and my girl Egypt. So like, subscribe, and share this video, and I'll see you guys next week.